Today on the last mega news of 2022. He gets a dive armor. 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 And uh, he gets a dive armor too. Well, I'll be. Other than that, we are catching up with highlights of general mega news that is not related to the Battle Network Legacy Collection. But don't worry, if you came for the Legacy Collection, we have a highly in-depth video about it in the link in the description below. And why the heck have there been no Mega Man games lately? We will explore all that and more in the upcoming Mega News. Let's rock! Welcome to your last Mega News Roundup for the end of 2022. Coming to you from the Shadowlock ZX YouTube channel and the MegamanNetwork.com. Like I said in the intro, this is going to be the catch-up video where I go over at least highlights of things I've missed over the last few months that I really wanted to cover. Because, well, if I got into everything, we'd be here all week. So let's ring in the new year with as much news as we can pack in so we can hit the ground running in 2023. Normally we would jump into the deep log right away, but I think it's important to first acknowledge Mega Man's 35th anniversary. Huh, <laughs> what anniversary, am I right? So a couple months ago, we got the first sneak peek at the Rockman 35th anniversary logo thanks to a collab product by Avarex. It's just a t-shirt. And to be honest with you, we haven't seen a lot of other 35th anniversary licensed goods since then. A lot of it has been Battle Network stuff, which is not part of the 35th anniversary according to Capcom, but rather the 20th of Battle Network, which we are still celebrating almost two years out from it. More on that in a bit. Anyway, that 35th anniversary logo, yeah, it looks really bland, especially compared to all of the other anniversary logos we've seen in the past, which either means that if there is a tie-in game in the upcoming year, it is general enough to where they're not going to fashion the logo after any specific series. Maybe it's a placeholder for a final logo when that game is announced, or they got absolutely nothing. And that last one is looking more likely by the day, as when December 17th, 2022 finally came around, there was nothing. No game announcements, especially, and not much else to be honest other than some comments from producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiya about the Battle Network Legacy Collection, which did get news earlier that week. Which was an awesome set of news by the way, don't get me wrong, but we already covered it. So at this point, it is looking likely that Capcom is focusing mainly on Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection until it comes out in April. At least as far as Mega Man stuff. Because as I mentioned, we're still catching up on the 20th anniversary celebrations that they planned forever ago. And here's why that is based on things I have come to understand and heard personally. It's no secret that they are far behind on their Mega Man Bound at Work 20th anniversary stuff. They plan collaborations with things like Duel Masters, even got a Metabots collab lately. Heck, two of them even. Originally that stuff was supposed to tie in with a Battle Network themed mobile game. And right now, we don't know what happened to that game. It was a thing, but we just don't know where it went. Was it cancelled? Are they saving it for later? That remains to be seen. In the meantime, we got in a number of Battle Network merchandise. We're still getting them to this day. And of course, it took until this year to finally get the announcement for the long-awaited, much-asked-for Battle Network Legacy Collection. In order to get to the core of the issue, we must go back to March 20, 2021, the anniversary of the Battle Network series, to revisit a comment from Uchi-san of Rockman Unity that he made during that time. If the world hadn't been in this situation, if the world hadn't been in such a state, I might have had other plans to announce, but for now, I think it's time to be patient. Of course, washing hands, gargling, and social distancing are important too. It's always Rockman who beats the virus after all. And yeah, that's the whole problem. To this day, Rockman is still fighting with that nefarious virus. 
The pandemic just completely derailed all of the Rockman team's plans. Not only for the Battle Network series, but future games as well. For a while at Capcom, it got to a point where if your game is not already almost done, and it's not Resident Evil or Monster Hunter or even Street Fighter for that matter, your project is probably going to get put on the back burner for now. And the biggest example of what I'm saying is the fact that Kazuhiro Tsuchiya, the current producer of the Mega Man series, is right now sharing responsibilities between the series and the development of Street Fighter 6 as one of the heads of it. That probably explains why there are a number of Mega Man references in Street Fighter 6. Yeah, imagine how rough it must be to head up Street Fighter and Mega Man at the same time. Not to mention anything else he's probably having to do. And given that Street Fighter 6 is dropping next year, guess which one is taking priority? So that's why I'm saying going into the 35th anniversary of Mega Man, Normally I would say it is safe to guess that we may finally see some type of new game announcement throughout the course of the year, especially since Battle Network Legacy Collection is coming out in April, so that leaves the rest of the year to potentially do something with it. And we do know that there are a couple Mega Man games in development at Capcom, like Rockman Tyson, which we have talked about time and time again for the past couple years. And that's really because, if things had gone according to plan, we would have had Rockman Tyson, like right now. But as you can see, it's clearly been delayed. So at this point, we're just playing the big ol' waiting game. When will it be announced? When will it come out? Nobody really knows. Hopefully the 35th anniversary is when we finally see something come to fruition, but... Because of the long-lasting effects of the pandemic derailing the whole scheduling of the development of the Mega Man series, it really is hard to say when we'll see something. As for what we could see besides Rock Band Tyson, well, I probably wouldn't hope for an X9 so soon because a while ago, in fact back in 2018, before the release of Mega Man 11, Capcom, through GMO Internet Group, filed domain names for Mega Man 12, Mega Man 13, Mega Man 14, and Mega Man 15. That's not to say that 12 through 15 is coming out right now, but it's there. And they were updated recently as of March 2022. So this is something worth keeping an eye on to see if anything comes of it. Maybe Capcom does have plans to make Mega Man 12 and on. Even though all of us want X9, Legends 3, whatever, from a business sense, it probably would make sense to do a follow-up to Mega Man 11, which, by the way, is now the top-selling Mega Man game in history. That's right, it finally happened, folks. Mega Man 2 has been dethroned by none other than Mega Man 11. It only took about four years, but that's really thanks to Capcom's current evergreen strategy with the Mega Man game. They put out a really good one and then just kind of sit on it for a while, doing game sales and all that. Or in other words, not repeating the mistakes from the 2000s where they put out sequels every year to the point that the Mega Man market basically crashed on itself because nobody was keeping up with all those games until eventually the sales just keep racking up ever so slightly until we see Mega Man 11 become the highest selling game in Mega Man history at 1.6 million units sold, surpassing Mega Man 2's 1.51 million units sold. And if you're hearing these numbers and thinking, wow, I mean that's great, but not nearly as much as like Resident Evil or Monster Hunter is doing in sales right now. Well yeah, you would be right. Let me remind everyone that Mega Man is kinda sorta niche. I mean, you could argue he was a big deal in like the NES and Super Nintendo days, but since then, not so much. Well Shadow Rock, Mega Man's the fourth best selling Capcom franchise. How did it get there? I mean... Have you seen all the friggin' Mega Man games that have come out in the last three decades? 
Maybe you haven't seen it if you haven't been keeping up with the Mega Man franchise. But let me say, there's a lot of them, from sequels to spin-offs and everything in between. When it comes to video game sales, Mega Man is definitely a quantity over quality franchise. Not to speak of any individual game's quality, but when you put out so many dang games, it's gonna add up eventually. There's only a handful of Mega Man games that have actually surpassed the 1 million mark. Let's just go over them real quick. In third place is Mega Man Battle Network 4 at 1.35 million units sold. Fourth place is Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 at 1.3 million units sold. You know, the whole reason why Mega Man 11 even exists because it did so well. And fifth place is Mega Man X on Super Nintendo at 1.16 million units sold. And at number six is Mega Man 3 on NES at 1.08 million units sold. Yep, that's it folks. If you have ever wondered to yourself why casual fans in the public space only really talk about Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man X, gee, maybe it's because those are the ones that actually sold. So that's why I'm happy that Mega Man 2 finally got dethroned because, man, Mega Man 2 has been overshadowing basically every other classic game and it's a shame. It's really good to see something else finally get the spotlight. Now, will that stop Capcom from making Mega Man 2 only references in everything they do? Probably not. But hey, at least there's another blockbuster on the board now. And it goes to show that Mega Man isn't dead. Capcom sees that it has sold, but man, they've really seen some unfortunate delays lately in the past couple years. And at this point, it's a matter of playing catch up, kind of like what we're doing right now. So let's get back to catching up, shall we? After all, when there's a lack of Mega Man news, there's always Rockman X Dive to make up for it. Well, usually. But lately, even Dive has been slowing down. While it is true that we've gotten a number of new characters over the last half year or so of Dive's life, much of that time otherwise has been spent with a lot of filler content. Reruns of event stages, even for a while until we got into the seasonal events for the year. What little new events we got didn't even have story dialogue. Except for the new Monster Hunter collab, because of course it did. It also wasn't until a month or two ago that we finally got a level cap update. We've been waiting that long. And in that level cap update, it was finally revealed. Yes, Fia's finally going to do the thing. He's been behind it all from the beginning. Wow, what a shocker. It's not like we called this from day one or something. Almost three years ago, mind you. Which brings us to this week's update, as we are expecting a new level cap update once again. This time we are getting Story Chapter 20, the one that is promised to finally wrap up the Via Saga of the Rockman X Dive story. Although we might not be getting the full chapter right away, let me explain. On the Japanese Twitter page for Rockman X Dive, they shared that specifically Chapter 20-1 is coming out this Wednesday. Wait, what? Why do you have to specify? Usually when you get a new chapter, you just get all six stages. But if this tweet is correct, we're just getting one stage and that's it. And the idea is they may be spoon feeding us the rest of the stages throughout the coming months until February. After all, Dive did recently come out with a roadmap for the coming months where they revealed that from January to February they're going to have a new Dive Armor character based on one of the original characters which we now know is Dive Armor Rico and that the game's story will greatly progress as well. Maybe that's what they meant by that, but man. If they're doing it that way, that's a weird choice because, as we know, the story chapter stages tend to be extremely short. But since it is supposed to be the final chapter of Rockman X Dive, these stages are probably going to have a lot of text dumping. And that's what they're probably banking on tidying us over until the following weeks. 
And then in March, besides the third anniversary of the game, we're also getting a new collaboration with an IP that hasn't been featured in the D blog before. In other words, hopefully it won't be Street Fighter or Monster Hunter again. Like golly, we already had three Monster Hunter collabs. Can we get something else please? Well, we may finally get something else. So, take your best guess of what you think it's going to be. Is it going to be Resident Evil? Devil May Cry? Is it going to be Ghouls and Ghosts to complete the dream from Mega Man Universe? Man, I hope it's Ace Attorney, but it won't be. Or heck, is it even going to be a Capcom IP? That is a good question. Definitely let us know in the comments what you think it's going to be. But anyway, getting back to this week, we're getting Chapter 20-1 at least. A level cap update, which obviously means a new co-op stage, new armor, and all that shebang. And of course, the latest in the Dive Armor series, Dive Armor Rico. So just to recap where we are at right now, we had Dive Armor X forever ago. Then the last few months, they've been really ramping up of these. We got Dive Armor Zero, which can cover the whole screen with his moves. And they didn't wait very long to release Dive Armor Axel right after. He also has screen nukes. Then we got Dive Cross Mega Man EXE. Oh yes, just in time for the announcement of the Battle Network Legacy Collection, he got a Dive Armor too. In case you thought it was just going to be the three Maverick Hunters, Dive Cross Mega Man EXE actually has some references to Falls Our Beast Mega Man. And suffice to say, he can delete you in a second and get that sweet S rank. So he's not going to have any issues powering up his SP chips. Which brings us to Dive Armor Rico, which combines the skills from both Dive Armor X and Dive Armor Zero. Which means you get Dive Armor X's charge shot and double Gemu Zero from Dive Armor Zero. You see the theme here? Yeah, she's got even more screen nukes. In other words, she's the perfect example of a modern dive character. Screen nukes, amazing defensive capabilities, the ability to penetrate terrain, and you can't forget the speed buff that makes them go insanely fast. Yep, for anyone who hasn't logged in in a while, this is basically how the dive meta has devolved into. The only thing that Dive Armor Rico is really missing is the ability to recover HP. And of course we have a funny typo in the trailer where they refer to Rico as a he. After three years, man. Never change, Dive. And if you want to hear another oh Capcom Taiwan moment, recently they came out with Christmas Ico, right? But there is a little bit of a discrepancy between the 2D art and the 3D model. And that is, for whatever reason, they decided to put a snowflake on her crotch. In the 3D model anyway. And it's like, come on guys, the 2D art just has snowflakes falling down. You know, like typical weather on Christmas day? It's not supposed to be part of her model. So in the patch notes that week, Capcom Taiwan is like, all right guys, we hear ya. There is indeed an issue with Christmas Ico's design and we will be fixing it. And we're like, oh, that means you're fixing the 3D model, right? Right? No. Of course that's not what they did. They just added the snowflake to her crotch in the 2D art as well. Wow. Bravo guys, uh, way to be consistent. I didn't expect that one, but then again I should've. I don't know who over there was so stubborn about a freaking snowflake on a crotch, but... Wow, what a hill to die on. <laughs> so I think I've highlighted at this point that... Well, dive ain't ever gonna change. It's just gonna be the way it is and... Really, with content in general slowing down in the last half of this year, like almost to a crawl at times, with all these OP characters and weapons coming out lately, and more to come by the way, and of course the fact that they're about to wrap up the main storyline, there is a lot of fear out there that 2023 might be the last one for Rockman X Dive. It certainly seems like the writing's on the wall at this point. But I guess we'll see what else they come up with after the storyline is done. Will this be the beginning of a new saga? Or is it just going to be filler until it's time to say goodbye? Only one way to find out. Though it is wild that after all this time, 
dive news may finally be slowing down by a lot in the coming year. Hopefully that means we'll have something else like Battle Network and possibly a new game to cover when that does happen. In the meantime though, let's end off this dive section with just a recap of some of the characters that came out. Recently, they finally gave us an s rank character for free. Now, I don't mean like Vigor Coins or banners or free polls or anything like that. I mean, they gave us an s rank character and the login bonus. Now that's a first. It's an s rank version of Vanilla X, but it's an s rank character nonetheless. And indeed, it's a retrain of Vanilla X, but what if he came out today in 2022? Oh, you know what that means. He's got bigger projectiles, he can pierce terrain, and he's got the speed buff, of course. The true mark of a modern dive character. But hey, that's far from all the X's we've gotten recently. We got a new armor and Shadow Armor X from X6. And actually, he is one of the best ones in my opinion. He's got insane defense and attacking power. This man can take down one of the Jacob stages with two bosses easily by himself. It's actually ridiculous. Then again, dive festival characters tend to be really good. How about another one? With the recent Monster Hunter collab, we got Shigeru Armor X. If you're going to ask me if he has a screen nuke, the answer is, why well, yes, he does. The other character of that collab was Gormagala Aiko, which completes the pair in Monster Hunter Rise, but I don't got that character. Let's see, last video, I think the last thing we talked about was Dr. Light the Martial Artist, which is still amazing. So after that, we got Swimsuit Aiko. Of course, the summer event, you always gotta have a waifu. But then we finally got a new ZX event. Oh boy, what new ZX character do we get this time? Oh, it's just Ale again, but... DXA Ale. Yeah! Oh man, I feel bad for Grey and Ash fans. Not to mention Vent fans. I couldn't even do that. The only difference is it's an S rank Ale and you don't have to transform into Model ZX this time. You just start in it. But you know, ZXA Ale was leaked literal years ago before this happened, so it was about time. After that, Sigma put on his best JoJo impression with Gangsta Boy Sigma. And, oh boy, the fanboys are gonna love this. Gangsta Girl Era. Yari, Yari, does it. We already discussed the dive armor characters, so next comes Halloween, where we get Halloween Zero and Halloween Via. Wow, two zeros? You shouldn't have dive. Speaking of duos. We recently got a new type of character, which is more of a team up between Bass and Treble. Now, it's mostly Treble that's the character, Bass is just there to hold the weapons. But you could see this as the Treble power up in Mega Man 2, the Power Fighters. And yeah, I guess that's one way to get another Bass alt. But it does beg the question, when do we get Mega Man and Rush, X and Zero, Lan and Mega Man, Geo and Omegasus with Beast Slap. Or maybe even X in his ultimate armor, but in its jet form before the ultimate armor. There's a lot you can do with that. The only other one I don't think we mentioned was Swimsuit CL, where she cosplays as Zero essentially. Oh my god, Rockman CL real. And yup, that's pretty much dive right now. Some pretty neat characters here and there, but otherwise, lots of filler, reruns, and that kind of stuff. But at least we're finally finishing the story, so... Even though the story is mostly so bad that it's comedic, at least we'll finally get to see how it all ends. Alright, let's keep things rolling with another one from the video game department. Although, not from Capcom themselves. Some of you may remember that in a previous Mega News video, I covered Mega Man World 5 DX. A ROM hack by Mark Max and Kasujin33 that completely transforms Mega Man World 5 into a Game Boy Color game, complete with full color graphics. Well folks, it's a Christmas miracle. On Christmas Day itself, Mega Man World 5 DX finally got released. The days of playing Mega Man 5 on Game Boy and Monochrome is officially over. 
and boy am I thankful for that because that was one of the main things that made me not want to revisit this game. But now that it's in color, I think it's definitely going to make me want to play it more. So the full features for this mod is that it's a fully colorized game now, no slowdowns, there's an NES styled pause screen, and it works both in emulators and real Game Boy Color hardware. Honestly, I've heard that this project took quite a long time to finish and man, it's just such an incredible achievement to turn a whole freaking monochrome game into a full colored one. Especially when the game wasn't originally designed for color. It takes a lot of work, folks. So definitely give the devs a round of applause and go to the link in the description and go download this mod right now. For those of you who have never experienced Mega Man World 5 before, I guess this is your new Mega Man game moment. Especially since this one is a fully original Mega Man adventure, unlike the previous Mega Man Game Boy titles that were just rehashes of Mega Man 1 through 5 but with the Mega Man killer showing up here and there. I think even for me who has played this game once through before, it's gonna feel like a whole new experience again. Just for the fact that now that it's in color, the visual information is going to stick out in my mind way better. Anyway, it's not a new game, but man, this is among the best Christmas presents I could have ever asked for. Thank you once again to the devs for doing this at all, and yeah, everybody enjoy. And that's not the only incredible fan project that recently was completed. Back in July, a group of fans organized by Get Me Off The Moon released an English fan translation of the Rockman Dash Great Adventure Guide. After a year and a half of hard work, English fans can now enjoy this book which features tons of pages of concept art, development tidbits, unused content and designs, and pieces of the Mega Man Legends lore you may have never heard of. Basically, if you're a Mega Man Legends fan, this is likely your Bible. Thank you so much to everyone involved in making this translation happen. It's a great gift to the community, and I'll leave the download link for this in the description below, where you can download the book in JPEG or PDF files in the single page or two page spread format. Incidentally, I just hosted a live interview with Rockman Cosmo, one of the heads of this book project, and also one of the leaders of the efforts to preserve the Rockman feature phone titles, such as Rockman EXE, Phantom and Network, Legend of Network, and Rockman Dash, Great Adventure on Five Islands. We had a live chat all about the project, the progress so far, and the challenges they had to face to even get to the point they're currently at, over on my YouTube channel, where you can find a link to that video in the description below. It is a highly recommendable watch just to get an appreciation for all the work that is going into finally getting these games into players' hands. As the final goal is really to get these games available to play for anyone. But beyond that, just preserving these games for the future generations is a super important cause in itself and well worth supporting. Because if this project doesn't succeed, these games could be lost forever and we need to make sure that never happens. Another thing worth preserving is the fan-made stages in Mega Man Powered Up. Yes, before there was a Mega Man Universe, which got cancelled, and before there was Mega Man Maker, there was the stage creator mode in Mega Man Powered Up on the PSP. The game didn't sell too great, but it was a cool little remake of the very first Mega Man game. And for more than 16 years, Mega Man Powered Up players could create their own stages and upload them to the game's servers online, for others to download and play for themselves. Unfortunately, as of November 30th, Mega Man Powered Up's servers has been powered down. It's been an incredible run for this game. Heck, the online servers for this game have outlasted several other online-focused games, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, now you are no longer able to download or upload levels. You can't even access the special data that lets you download stage packs and unlock Roll as a playable character with a ton of different costumes. But I wouldn't worry too much, as there are efforts to preserve all of the contents that Protodude is a part of. 
Early this month, he made an update tweet saying that they managed to download and preserve over 80,000 stages. And if he ever makes an update post on it, I'll be sure to let you guys know about it in a future video. In other video game news, SNK recently came out with Neo Geo Pocket Color Selection Volume 2, which features Mega Man Battle and Fighters in the collection. It's available now on Nintendo Switch and PC. So now you have the option of buying Mega Man Battle and Fighters separately or as part of this volume collection. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the standalone release that I covered a while ago. I also did a live stream on this collection in the description below if you are interested. In some mega-esque news, Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 recently updated with its final free update. As a recap, we had the Nizer mode, which is basically the Gunvolt only mode that people were asking for, though personally, I just want a Gunvolt mode without a time limit. We got some new boss fights including Marak and Taseo together. Nova and freaking Asimov himself is back too. All culminating into the final update which is a new story chapter titled Epilogue of Thames, where you get to play as Zed Omega, the leader of Atems himself, as he searches for the Azure spirits. It's a fun addition, but if you're hoping that the epilogue will fix the badly received storyline, I got bad news for you. However, Gunvolt 3 did come out on Steam, PlayStation 4, and 5 recently, and with the Steam release, they added a little section to the ending that explains a little bit more of what's going on. Although at first, it was exclusive to Steam and not Switch until it got added later, so that was an odd choice. One of those things where it's like, why wasn't this scene there to begin with? But I will say this much, kudos to NT for making all this extra content free. Even the DLC packs that include image pulses were free for the first two weeks that they came out. So that's pretty neat. If you're interested, I also have a stream about Epilogue of Thames and the extra boss fights that were added in the description below. Before we leave the video game news, I want to give a shout out to 30XX, the roguelike game that's heavily inspired by Mega Man X from Battery Staple Games. The game is still in alpha, but it has had a number of huge updates recently. New bosses and stages, new power-ups, and a bunch of optimizations and changes to how weapons interact, and all that fun stuff. It's well worth checking out if you're interested in a roguelike Mega Man X game, especially if you use the great Mega Man X mod that we've been trying out recently on stream. Posted by Malkavia and worked on by numerous amounts of people, the Mega Man X mod does what it says. It converts 30XX into what could be like a new Mega Man X game in a sense. Nina and Ace are swapped out for X and Zero respectively. All of the bosses have been converted into X series bosses. Even the standard enemies have been turned into Mega Man series stuff, as well as many of the power-ups. One of my favorite things about the mod, however, and 30XX itself, is that you can collect armor parts that power up your augments. And with the Mega Man X mod, you can fashion the armor after many of X's different armors throughout the series. Even Zero gets Black Zero, Classic Zero from X1, and Mega Zero. But more excitingly for X, you have the usual suspects like Fourth Armor, Falcon Armor, Gaia Armor, the Ultimate Armors, but then you get to see the fan community's takes on some of X's other armors if they were in X4. Yep, in glorious 32-bit fashion, we have 1st Armor X, 2nd Armor X, 3rd Armor X, the Command Mission armors, and the most recent addition being Dive Armor X from Rockman X Dive. Holy crap, these look amazing. Not to mention Dive Armor Zero is on his way too. If you want to play 30XX of a really great mod, I'll have a link to all these in the description below. Well folks, we're getting towards the end here. Like I said, I could be here all night if I wanted talking about different things that have gone on recently, but for now, I think it's best that we end this off with some cool news from Kotobukiya about their model kits on the X series, Battle Network series, and even Classic series. First of all, Mega Man EXE and Dark Mega Man EXE are both available to purchase, like, right now. 
I haven't picked up the EXE kits myself yet, but I have heard from other people that generally this is better quality than the X kits were. However, there is one issue and that is Mega Man's red Navi emblem is not colored in out of the box. And that goes for both of the ears and his chest emblem. So if you are planning on getting EXE, I would recommend picking up yourself a fine tip Gundam marker so that you can fill in the lines yourself. The next Kodo model kit slated to come out is First Armor X from X1, and he will be ready to throw Hadoukens in January 2023, that's really soon. He comes with three facial expressions, the buster, interchangeable hands, and the charge shot effect part. Which isn't the spiral crush shot, but it is colored like a Hadouken, so there you go. For the next X armor, they skipped X5 and went straight to X6 with the blade armor. From what I can tell, it's a faithful recreation and man, he looks clean. Blade Armor X comes with interchangeable face parts, the Buster, Buster deployment parts, four interchangeable hands, the Z Saber, because of course it's X6, three Saber effect parts, and a weapon holding hand part for Vanilla X so he can use a Saber. Nice. Blade Armor X will be cutting into your collection in April 2023, and pre orders are live right now for him. Hey, we get Bound Network Legacy Collection and Blade Armor X on the same month. Very cool. Looking ahead into the future from here, there has been a lot more stuff they have announced. We have the second Armor X double charge shot version. I don't know why they didn't do that to begin with, but I guess you gotta have an alt. Finally, Axel is getting a model kit. Oh my god, it's happening. The boy is getting represented. All the S-Class Hunters back together again. From the Battle Network series, Roll EXE is getting a model kit. Awesome. Really nice to see more navvies other than Mega Man. Though I won't lie, I thought they would go for Base or Proto Man next. And then from the Classic series, they are doing a Mega Man 11 version of Mega Man himself. Yes, they've done a Mega Man kit before, but that was the classic, classic Mega Man. This one is his updated armor from 11. And judging from the prototype pictures, he looks really slick. And hey, if you want even more Battle Network figures, Bandai has you covered with the SMP Kit Makes Pose line. Featuring Mega Man himself, Roll, and they even have Gutsman and Fireman, including a Metar and Kenodone virus respectively. Each of the navvies also come with their own battlefield parts so you can combine them together to recreate the battle grid from the game. I like that, that's an awesome idea. If you wish to pre-order in the US, they are available as a volume 1 set on Big Bad Toy Store, slated to come out August 2023 at 140 US dollars. Ouch, that's gonna hurt our wallets. Hopefully they release some of these figures separately soon. And you may have noticed I said Volume 1, because obviously they're planning a Volume 2. Of which, so far, Bandai has teased both Heat Gut Style and Wood Shield Style as additional figures. Heck, get Elect Team Style and Aqua Custom Style in there and you have a full set. Overall, it's great to see more Battle Network love in general. I hope if we ever get a Star Force Legacy Collection that we get the same kind of love from the merchandising companies. If you are interested in checking out more Mega Man content, I was recently a part of a video by Gavin Dragon titled The Ultimate Guide to Mega Man, which covers the best ways to play the Mega Man series from the classic X, Zero, ZX, and Legend series. I'll have a link to it in the description below if you are interested. And don't worry, Gavin has promised that there are videos for Battle Network and Star Force on the way as well. That about does it for today's Mega News Roundup, and the last one for the year. And I know, I know somewhere along the way I missed something big or something that you were hoping that I would cover. So to make up for that, here's what I'm going to do. In the link in the description below, I'm going to include some Rockman Corner articles to little bits of news that I thought was cool but couldn't fit into this video. So you can go down there and click on anything that catches your fancy and enjoy it at your leisure. I will say, even though there's no new game announcements yet, besides the Battle Network Legacy Collection of course, it is awesome that we always have something to talk about around here in this community. And I'm happy to keep on covering it for as long as I can and if I have time. But yep, as we ring in the new year, 
Thank you all so much for supporting Shadowrock CX this year. Let's have a great 2023, no doubt filled with tons of online net battles and an official game. Imagine that. And of course, keep on praying to the cap gods above that we finally get some kind of new game announcement. It's the 35th anniversary after all. Let's celebrate it in style. In the meantime, stay tuned to Shadowrock CX for all things Mega Man. And be sure to check out the Mega Man Network, that's the mmnetwork.com for all sorts of articles on the Mega Man series and videos like this one. I also want to thank all of the Shadowrock CX channel members so much for your support throughout the year, including our SA class supporters Manguy and Spazer, GA class supporters Rico Syndrome, Adrian Cauldron, Chaos Bankai, and Austin Buford, and our UH class supporter LML123. Thank you all once again, and well, since 2023 is going to be the year of Battle Network, there's only one way we should end off 2022. Are you ready everybody? Say it with me. Jack in! Mega Man! Execute! <laughs>